Thank you. All right. So uh, I'm going to talk about some changes um, uh, at uh, the use of the Google Maps API. Um, uh, I should probably mention uh, another change that's been uh, going on with Google Maps, and that's uh, getting away from the, the dreaded web mercator projection. Uh, so this happened in the past couple months. I, uh, I don't know all the attributes of this. It'd be nice to see a, a TSO indicatrix type thing to show uh, perhaps angular distortion on this map. Um, but obviously, we're no longer dealing here with the Mercator projection. And uh, I'm not, I, I thought perhaps they switched to a Mercator projection as it gets to larger scale, but I'm not sure <laughs> that's the case. Uh, so I don't know what the projection is at larger scales. Uh, but certainly it's not Mercator here. So anyway, um, the talk today is really about uh, uh, about the change that happened in Google's attempt to try to earn money uh, uh, by making Google Maps no longer essentially free. So um, I, I should, I, uh, so the first thing, let me say that the Google Maps, of course, was introduced in 2005. It was a, it was a big change, of course. It made uh, what I call multi-scale panable maps easily available through the internet. Uh, it, uh, it followed then with a series of other companies uh, adapting to this and p basically uh, making the same maps, same types of maps available. Uh, the corresponding application program interface, uh, the API, was introduced in 2006. Uh, and um, this allows, of course, access to the underlying Google Maps code, and it's all based on JavaScript. So the code there illustrates, illustrates a, a little bit of the code, the JavaScript code that's used to call the, the Google Maps API. And I think you can see things like zoom level and uh, um, the, uh, the other things going on here, including the addition of a marker uh, on, on the map. So, um, okay. Um, sorry, just uh, do that, okay. Um, so, uh, the, um, in calling the Google Maps API, there is this key, um, and the key is available as you get the key from, from, from Google. Um, and of course, for many years, uh, it was, you could use the Google Maps API without a key. So the second example is the use of it without a key. Uh, the key is supposed to be specific to a server, although now they make it so that the key can work on multiple servers. So, it, uh, so it's, it's, it's assigned, it can be assigned to a server, but it doesn't need to be assigned to a specific server. The, uh, uh, so the history of the key is the following. <laughs> uh, from 2006 to 2010, uh, you, could, uh, you needed a key, uh, but you could use Google Maps as much as you wanted. There was no limitations at all in the number of maps that were served uh, by, uh, by Google. Uh, in 2011, 2016, uh, it was essentially uh, free for 25,000 maps a day for 90 consecutive days. Uh, so if you exceeded that limit of 25,000 maps for 90 consecutive days, then you needed to get a key. Um, and so, but below that, there's no, no key required. I always had a, a standing uh, challenge to my students to try to develop a Google map that would get 25,000 map views a day for 90 consecutive days, and I can tell you that nobody was able to achieve that, okay? Uh, it, I think a lot of us think that perhaps our maps are being used more than they are. Uh, and, uh, um, and so, by, by the way, at this time, uh, many people moved away from Google Maps uh, because they thought, uh, uh, you know, because that limit they thought was too, too daunting, uh, they, they moved to another platform. And of course, uh, um, uh, so there was other APIs were then developed and were used. So um, from 2017 to 2018, it was just 25,000 maps a day. So if you exceeded 25,000 maps a day, then you needed a key. Um, and then uh, from 2018 on, I guess now, 
Um, there is a key that's required, so your, your Google Maps will not work without a key, and it has to be secured by a credit card, okay? So you have to put a credit card in, and you're given $200 monthly uh, credit on this, on your account. So the, the, real, uh, the real purpose here uh, for, for us in teaching this is to see what you can get for $200, okay? And so, um, so we're starting, starting that process. By the way, the other APIs that are out there, um, they also require a key, so it's not unusual uh, that a key is required. Um, and uh, so this is, uh, of course, all a part of this, the mapping in the cloud book because it's mostly based on, the code that's in the book is mostly based on uh, Google Maps uh, Google Maps code. So if you go to the website here, it's uh, maps.unomaha.edu slash cloud, uh, you go to a code site, and on the code site you have um, uh, various uh, examples that use different types. I'm sorry, it's not showing that. I'm sorry. Um, all right, so I will not, um, if I do this real quick. Mm-hmm, okay. So I'm just gonna go away from the web page here because you can't see the web page. All right, so um, it shows different kinds of code uh, that are, uh, that use an API and most of the examples use the Google Maps API. And, uh, and so, um, in, uh, uh, so this is a, for example, one of the, the pages from that website uh, looking at different ways, different kinds of symbols and different kinds of lines, different kinds of file types that can be used in, in making maps with the Google Maps API. Um, you can see there are examples of JSON files and GeoJSON files and KML files, uh, different ways of getting points uh, onto the map, essentially. So, um, so the Google Maps platform, this is the new name for this, uh, was announced in, in April 2018. The new pricing plan, of course, requires an account with a credit card, um, and the roll, rollout began in, in July. It was done in a kind of intermittent way, so one day uh, your map would work without a Google key, the next day it would not work without the Google key. So it, they, they did it uh, sort of, uh, uh, in an intermittent way anyway. Um, so with, without the key, the maps look like this, okay? So they, they give you a, a page saying it didn't load properly, and then in the background you see that for development purposes only, you actually see the map, you can sort of see whether your code works, uh, but it's not the view that you would normally get. So this is from a long time user of the Google Maps API and um, what he thought about this. Uh, so he said, I thought Google was safe because their entire business model was based on advertising, not charging users directly for use of their services. They were successful because many people using their products and you need many eyeballs to, for advertising to work and to get that you make the product free, uh, supported by the ads. Uh, it's how Google Maps always worked, and uh, how Google always worked, and it's how I expected them to continue to work. They introduced a fee structure for use of the Google Maps API back around 2012, but the limits were so high, the 25,000 maps a day thing, that uh, we fell way within uh, their free quota. And I never had to char uh, never charge a dime for the use, and that was all good. So in May of this year, um, it became apparent that something had dramatically changed. Uh, Google was completely changing the way they did business with their API after years of getting everybody, like myself, to integrate deeply with their product on the basis that it would be cheap, or mostly, if not entirely free for developers uh, at my level, suddenly they had decided to raise their price, not by a little, but by a whole lot, uh, thousands of percent, uh, actually. The upshot was that instead of a free limit of 20,000 maps a day, uh, they were moving to a quota of 28,000 views per month. So, um, so that's the, the pricing structure. Um, uh, 28,000 maps uh, served to different IP addresses, essentially. 
um, probably would cover the majority of people who use a Google map, which is which is, uh, and Google Maps are used on something like 4.5 billion different websites. Um, all right, so um, one of the things we discovered is that Google allows API users to set daily cap on the number of map loads per day. All right, so in this way, you never exceed the 28,000 maps and you are never charged. All right, so, um, so this is, well, I'll go through this later. The developer I mentioned before, he said, you know, Leaflet does much the same, same thing. Leaflet is another API that's used. Uh, it's free. Um, and many extensions do, do all the, the functions that the Google Maps API does. And then he goes on to say that Stadia, Stadia is a company that, um, that gives access to map tiles. And, so he goes, say, he goes to say that goes on to say generally anything that involves calling a server somewhere will require paying the person who runs the server, since running servers obviously takes money. So uh, Leaflet, J, the Leaflet API is free uh, and open source, but getting map tiles with Leaflet will likely involve paying someone. Okay, so that's his reasoning for moving to this, this Stadia, and Stadia has a pricing structure like this uh, that essentially it's uh, uh, 2,500 map views a day, uh, and that's, uh, you know, over the month would be more map views than what Google offers for the $200. Stadia looks like this. It, uh, this is their rendering. Um, it, um, it is, uh, I suppose, somewhat Google like in appearance. Um, my, my students, though, would say uh, that this map comes from Mars. <laughs> it's not a map that they would be, they would like or be familiar with, uh, and certainly not one that they would use. Um, so this is the map that they're most comfortable with. It's the Google map. It has the colors that they're, they become comfortable with. Uh, and you put the two next to each other. It's sort of interesting to see that that they're labeling completely different things uh, on these two maps. I mean, the, 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 the sort of suburbs and things like that are sort of completely different <laughs> on these maps. Of course, these are, this is the decision-making process between the two that's, that's then different. Um, all right, so for, free, for $200, what do you get? Um, well, you get uh, embed. Embed is a way of embedding uh, a single location in a website. So it puts a marker, a symbol location. You can do that for free all you want. Um, these multi-scale panable maps, the normal maps that we expect, that's like uh, 28,000 um, views I mentioned. Uh, static street view is 28,000. That's the, the panorama image, and, but you're only looking at one, let's say one view from that image. Um, dynamic uh, street view is bound to 14,000. Directions is another, directions calculates directions going from two locations, right? So you can only do that uh, 40,000 times. Um, and the autocomplete places is 70,000 times. That's when you, when you type something in and auto completes the rest of what, you're, what you were typing in. Uh, Geocoding is when you get an ad, put an address in, it figures out the location of that. That's 40,000. Uh, and then uh, uh, geolocation, something similar. Elevation is giving elevation at a spot. Um, after that, you start to have to pay. And so the pay structure is something like this, uh, just an ordinary map that zooms in and out and pans side to side. Uh, after 28,000, you're paying $7 per 1,000 calls on that map. And then it goes on to the static street view is about the same, dynamic street view. Uh, directions, $5 per thousand over the amount that's given to you uh, in, that, uh, in that amount. So um, the Google Maps console is this device that they've implemented to keep, to show you how you're doing, so keep track of your use or, or, or use of your, your uh, web pages that are serving these maps. Um, so it allows um, some extensions here, access to technical support, but the technical support actually costs money. So, uh, so the bronze support is free, and then of course they, you have to purchase the other stuff to get, uh, 
to get to the support. It looks something like this. This is a, a, not, a, not a wonderful user interface, but it shows you how many times you, people have called different types of uh, the, the, the different services, the different APIs that they offer. And, uh, and here you have uh, the numbers here for the geocoding API, the maps elevation API, the maps uh, JavaScript API, and so forth, and how that's called. Um, we, we normally see spikes in our usage because we have, we do the exercises on a certain day and then uh, everybody's using it. Uh, you can see it going over several days here. So it might be that they're not working on their assignments uh, for a few days. And then uh, here we see uh, uh, an, you know, another view of, uh, of how they're, they're showing usage here uh, on, the, on the console. And um, here is, uh, five, okay. Um, uh, here's again over multiple days and, and showing usage of, of the API. Uh, and uh, so on this particular one, I think, uh, I think on the next one we, we see that uh, we've actually gotten, we reached a limit on a certain day. So we had 700 uh, views per day as a limit and somebody reached that limit. Um, uh, and uh, it's, it, we tell our students, well, just wait till the next day, the, you'll have 700 views again the next day. So uh, it'll, it'll work fine the next day. So um, where does that leave us with the Google Maps API? Well, I, you know, I'd say um, one, one of the problems with perhaps moving away from Google Maps is you may uh, lose map users as a result because people are so used to the look and colors and the, the way the Google Map is done. Not that it's necessarily good from our perspective, but they're, they're used to it. They, they see that as the normal map. Um, Google's new monthly limits would likely work for most developers. Um, it is certainly working for us, uh, more or less, for a class of 10 students that work through the many Google Map code examples associated with the mapping in the cloud book. The daily limits can be set, um, and we set them a little bit lower than, than we thought we needed, but uh, so it can be set so that uh, you'll, the credit card will never be charged. So you can set the daily limits to such a level that you'll never reach the, um, the, 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 uh, the $200 free credits, okay? And then when, it, when they're, they, they are reached, you'll just get that for development purposes only, which is fine for students because you know, they can wait a day to, to, to see the map, but they at least can see that the map is working uh, the, way, uh, the way it's intended. And then the next day, the message goes away. The long-term consequences, uh, I, I think you know, Google's making a mistake. Uh, they should try to get money other ways. <laughs> um, but um, you, when you're working with companies are trying every which way to make more money, that's what, they, that's what they're supposed to do. Um, uh, and I think uh, in the end, I think they should concentrate on other ways, perhaps charging places who want to be on the Google map to be represented on the map. That would, make, uh, would seem to me more, make more sense, although that might change the design a bit much. All right, so that's, that's essentially it. I should, I should mention I have two other authors on the paper. Uh, Paul Hunt uh, set up the, uh, the, the whole Google uh, console interface. And Madison Woodrum is here. She's uh, my teaching assistant. She took the class last semester. She's now helping me teach the class. And uh, you can talk to her about how difficult <laughs> or not difficult it is. Okay, thank you. <laughs>